Okay, game. Uh, happy Monday sa lahat. At pag-uusapan natin today ay yung mga bagong announce lang na cabinet picks ni incoming President CDM. And quick reminder, lahat ng video, lahat ng content natin dito sa YouTube page, Facebook page, at Instagram, lahat ng eventual uh, monetary, let's say, earnings niya ay i-donate natin sa Angat Buhay NGO. Okay. So, merong in-announce na limang new cabinet members uh, si incoming president-elect BBM. So, isa-isahin natin and then I'll tell you a little bit of what I know so far based dun sa mga nabasa natin online. And then later on, as usual, mag-ano tayo, good news and bad news uh, sa mga nakita nating balita for the past couple of days. Right? Okay. So, pinakauna sa... Nabanggit ni Attorney Trixie Cruz Angeles ay si Erwin Tulfo. Erwin Tulfo ay magiging secretary ng DSWD. Tapos, sumunod ay si Amena Pangandaman. Si Amena Pangandaman, siya ang magiging secretary ng De Department of Budget Management. Department of Budget and Management or DBM. Sumunod naman si Marina Ma Marina <laughs> Maria Cristina Frasco Maria Cristina Frasco Secretary Incoming ng Department of Tourism o DOT Tapos, next ay si Ivan Enrile Uy Ivan Enrile Uy Incoming Secretary ng Department of Information and Communication Pinakahuli sa list natin ay si Naida Amping Ang Ping, sorry. Naida Ang Ping. Siya naman ang magiging secretary or head ng Presidential Management Staff or PMS. Okay, so one by one, uh, I'm, I'm gonna try and, or mention kung ano yung mga nabasa ko na. So I did a little bit of googling syempre para ma-share sa inyo what kind of picks were these. Uh, whether meron silang solid credentials or if they have like competency that could back up yung selection nila dun sa mga napiling incoming agencies na pamumunuan nila, di ba? Pinakauna, ito medyo controversial, I have to say, uh, uh, si Erwin Tulfo sa DSWD. Okay, sino ba si Erwin Tulfo? Alam natin, media personality yan. Alam natin, part yan ng Tulfo Brothers, right? Nandyan si Mon, nandyan si Rafi, nandyan si... Siyempre, yung Tulfo Brothers, pati yung kapatid nila na naging DOT Secretary under Duterte before, right? Ano pa? Uh, siya ay currently nasa PTV. PTV personality siya. And according sa Wikipedia na, Siya ang nag anchor ng Ulat Bayan. Ito yata yung prime time na parang 24 oras sa PTV. Right? Okay. So, siya yung mag ng DSWD. And what are some of the controversies na sinasabi about disappointment? Pinakauna dyan yung pagtuligsa niya doon sa current na DSWD secretary. Ito si Retired General... Uh, Rolando Bautista Kung maalala nyo Like, I don't know, two years ago yata uh, Nagreklamo si Erwin Tulfo Parang nagkaroon siya ng isang online rant Na tinawagan daw nila Yung opisina ni Secretary Bautista Ng DSWD Kasi nga, they were doing a show And nagalit siya dahil sinabi sa kanya Na they, they have Or he has To file a formal request pa I mean, I think that's fair kasi nga any government agency kailangan may formality para sa communication, right? So si Irwin, nagalit siya. Sabi niya dun sa online rant niya na uh, sino ba tong Bautista na to? Rolando Bautista na to? Sino ba tong buwang na to? Na kailangan ko pang tumawag, kailangan ko pang gumawa ng formal request para lang makausap siya. So yun yung controversy na yun. Uh, kung naalala nyo, parang yung mga PMA or yung mga sa military institutions, nag nagkampi-kampi sila kasi nga, retired general to. So, parang medyo na force mag-apologize si Erwin Tulfo uh, with, that, with that incident, pero without naming Secretary Rolando Bautista as the one directly affected. So, yun yung medyo 
parang magiging awkward the transition between Bautista going to Tulfo. Right? Okay, ano pang mababanggit ko kay uh, Erwin Tulfo? So, on the flip side, ano naman yung credentials niya or experience niya na pwedeng makatulong bilang DSWD Secretary? Una dyan, sabi ni Attorney Trixie, social work niya daw has encompassed mga three decades, mostly within the media complex kasi nga media practitioner siya, right? So, in his shows na naging part siya, so tumutulong sila sa may hirap, tumutulong sila sa nangangailangan, so we can consider that part of his, let's say, experience in, in helping, in, in, in doing social work uh, in, in that context, di ba? So th that's good in itself. Ibig sabihin, alam nila or sanay silang tumulong sa mga nangangailangan, sanay silang makarelate sa mga nangangailangan dahil matagal na, matagal na nga nila itong ginagawa independently in the media organizations that he's been part of, right? Ano pa? Uh, yung public, yung programa daw niya before, I don't know which one, na awarda ng Best Public Service Program. So, him specifically, Best Public Service Program host. So, ibig sabihin, may, may nagagawa, I guess, based on that award-giving body, dun sa pagtulong nila, right? So, that would serve him. That experience would serve him, right? So, looking forward dun sa dalawang bagay na yun. Paano transition? Dun sa dalawang medyo nagkabanggaan before. And then, paano magagamit ni Erwin Tulfo yung experience niya uh, in public service as a media practitioner going to actual government work, di ba? Okay. Punta tayo sa iba pa. Uh, medyo nasangkot din sila sa 60 million pesos na, let's say, nagpatawag pa nga ng hearing about this kasi nga DOT Secretary yung kapatid nila na si, ang pangalan ay Wanda Teo, kapatid nila. Ang nangyari noon, if you can remember, si Wanda Teo, DOT Secretary, nagpadala siya ng 60 million pesos sa isang programa ng PTV. Ang, yung, ang programa na to ay tinatawag na Kilos Pronto. Kilos Pronto TV Show. So, nagpadala siya ng 60 million pesos to pay for TV ads placements ng DOT, which she was secretary of, right? Tapos, nung na-discovery ng COA, uh, na napag-alaman na wala pang contract or wala pang memorandum of agreement between that TV show and the people that were behind that TV show, uh, tapos yung DOT wala pa. And sinasabi din ni Wanda Teo, na hindi daw niya alam na yung kapatid niya na si Ben at Erwin Tulfo yung mga essentially producer or may pakana or, or, or the owners of the Kilos Pronto TV show, right? Hindi daw niya alam. Which is, if you did your due diligence, medyo madali lang naman malaman yun, right? So because of that, parang nag-resign si Wanda Teo, yung kapatid nila, out of delicadesa as DOT secretary. So, iyon yung bruhaha ng 60 million pesos. Na according to the reports, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa daw binabalik. Pero pinangako na ng magkapatid na Adulfo, si Erwin at si Ben na ibabalik daw yun. Pero ngayon, wala pang accounts na binalik na nila, yung 60 million pesos. Okay. Ano pang masasabi natin? I think for Erwin, yun na yun. I'd like to move on to the next person. Ang sunod natin ay si Cristina Frasco, incoming DOT, to Tourism Secretary. Okay, sino siya? Siya ang current na mayor, recently re-elected lang, ng Liloan o Liloan Cebu. Liloan Cebu, yata. Uh, isa siyang lawyer, graduate ng Ateneo. And ito yung interesting part. Siya ang anak ni Cebu Governor Gwendolyn Garcia. Gwendolyn Garcia na nagback kay BBM as we know. So ito yung anak na si Cristina, Maria Cristina Frasco, incoming DOT Secretary. Right? Siya din yung spokes o spokesperson ni Sara Duterte during this campaign period. So Duterte spokes, 
etong incoming DOT secretary natin. Now, to be fair to her, ano ba yung credentials, ano ba yung experience na dadala ni Ma'am Frasco sa DOT? So, yung mga magagandang bagay na nakita ko kay Ma'am Frasco, uh, bilang mayor, nung Liloan, Cebu, at bilang public servant, I'm gonna enumerate some. Pinakunang tumalon sa akin or nakita ko ay nakuha nila yung unqualified opinion galing sa COA. Ito yung same unqualified opinion na nakuha ng BVP Lenny for, for the OVP. Nakuha ng Liloan Cebu yun for three, for three years or for three times until 2020. So during the time na siya yung mayor ng Liloan, three times nilang nakuha yung unqualified opinion ng ng COA. So that means we can assume na she she's accountable, may accountability and merong transparency kasi dineclare nga ng COA na unqualified opinion yung leadership niya, right? So that's good. Kahit na merong parang baggage, I would say na anak siya ni Gwendolyn Garcia, yung governor ng Cebu. Ano pa? Siya din ay nakakuha ng presidential Lingkod Bayan Award from the Civil Service Commission. Ano ba to? Nagkaroon sila nung 2021, parang yearly to. So it's a search for outstanding uh, leaders, public servants in, in, in government service. And the reason why she was selected now is because of transparency, leadership, dun sa Liloan Cebu. So I'm hoping na kahit na anak siya ni Gwendolyn Garcia, that she brings that same level of accountability, transparency sa DOT. Kasi alam natin, sobrang undervalued yung DOT, yung potential ng tourism sa, sa Philippines. Talong-talo tayo ng uh, neighbors natin, like yung Thailand, yung Vietnam. Uh, they bring in a whole lot more foreign visitors yearly. Pero tayo, ang dami nating good spots. Pero hindi, hindi masyadong napopromote, right? So I hope that her, her credentials... Na, na binigay ng COA and qualified opinion, that will be carried over. That transparency will be carried over para efficient yung paggamit nung, nung budget na maalat sa DOT. Diba? Okay. Punta tayo sa susunod si uh, Amena Pangandaman, DBM Budget and Management Secretary. So, si Pangandaman, siya ay parang career person nasa DBM and I, I like seeing that well, whenever that happens kasi nga ibig sabihin yung mga tao na umaangat sa, sa ladder in the same way na kung corporate you, you'd hate somebody na wala man ng experience uh, suddenly go to the top so may experience siya part na siya ng structure ng DBM assistant secretary siya dati so siya ngayon yung incoming secretary na ng DBM tapos siya ay former chief of staff ni Edgardo Angara. So, si late uh, Senator Edgardo Angara. So, sabi nga ni Sunny Angara, uh, Senator ngayon, na uh, he, he welcomes that assignment kasi nga ex-staffer din si Pangandaman sa Senate. So, magiging okay dapat yung, uh, let's say, relationship or yung communication between the Senate and between the DBM, which is, which is crucial, right? Uh, kasi nga DBM would kind of have a, a good, let's, let's say, governance dun sa bigiging budget din ng mga pinapasa nila dun sa Senado, di ba? Uh, apart from Edgardo Angara, she also worked with Loren Legarda. Tapos, uh, very heavy din siya in, in economic credentials kasi nga assistant governor na siya currently in Banko Central ng Pilipinas. So, she has been like a like a trusted, let's say, confidant or a trusted, at least, quote-unquote, disciple ni, ni Jokno, yung incoming DOF secretary natin. In fact, dati siyang chief of staff ni Ben Jokno. Okay. Uh, background niya, master's, at tinista din yata si Pangandaman, and she got her master's degree in development economics galing naman sa UP. Okay, moving on. Punta tayo sa D sa ang tawag dito, Department of Information and Communication Secretary na incoming. Ito si Ivan Enrile Uy. Si Ivan Uy is a young lawyer and these are the things I found out. 
Uh, unang-una, IT expert siya. And that's really important kasi nga you're leading an, an extensively IT or uh, IT-heavy department. Matatandaan natin kay, kay President Duterte in a, in a, in a point dyan si Gringo Honasan bilang, <laughs> bilang secretary ng same uh, agency, right? So si Honasan, we know na medyo dinosaur na si Honasan and we can we can safely assume na hindi siya IT expert. So ito yung papalitan niya na na magiging head at yung magiging head IT expert siya. Tapos in fact, past chairman siya on commission on the predecessor ng pangungunuan ng agency yung uh, Information and Communications uh, Commission on Information and Communication Technology. So past commissioner siya noon. Tapos Siya ay, uh, apart from what I mentioned, lawyer, siya ay current corporate secretary ng Philippine Chamber of Commerce. So that means apart from being an IT expert, meron din siyang know-how or linkages with the business community, which is, which is good because that will be a big factor in the digital transformation ng iba't ibang government agencies. Like sabihin na natin na maraming government agencies ang hindi pa digitally transformed. Marami pang marami pang dapat i-evolve, right? So makakatulong yung know-how niya. Ah, uh, Rance, hey, kumusta pare? Dinosaur nga. <laughs> Tapos, sinabi din niya na it, uh, medyo tinuligsan yung Smartmatic before during his time uh, when he was giving opinions as an IT expert. So sabi niya, to quote or to paraphrase, if ballot switching can be done with the old system, in the automated system, SD card switching is also possible or SD card switching can also be done. So that means that at least he's open to the idea that although automated elections na tayo and meron siyang IT know-how, he's also cognizant of the fact na hindi 100% foolproof yung automated elections. In fact, coming from him as an IT expert, possibly yung SD card switching. So I think that will be good. That will uh, that will serve him good in in the sense na makakapagbigay din siya ng opinions na hindi lang based on opinions coming out of nowhere, but opinions coming from somebody who has extensive IT background, right? Tapos uh, another good thing, ito yung hitting on the unity theme ni incoming President BBM, he reached out to the aisle again and etong si Enrile Uy or si Ivan Uy, he also served under the Pinoy administration. So, ito yung isa pang example na willing mag-reach out si President BBM even sa mga quote-unquote dilawan administration and it, it's good in the sense na competent itong kinuha niya for a very important part of the of the cabinet, di ba? Okay, moving on. Ang um, susunod naman ay si ang um, Ping, si Naida ang Ping. Si Naida ang Ping ang magiging head ng uh, what do you call this? PMS or Presidential Management Staff. Hindi rin ako familiar kung anong presidential uh, management staff. I had to google it. So, based on nabasa ko, ito isa daw tong agency within Malacanang that assists the president on deciding uh, on policies and... Ano to? Hindi ko mabasa yung sarili kong sulat. Uh, course of action. So, parang advisor on, on different policies, course of action. So, parang isa lang tong, uh, let's say, extension ng executive secretary, ng special assistant to the president, uh, Nakita natin na kinuha niya si Rep. Lagdameo, parang old friend niya na yata. Kahit na nung bata pa, kilala niya na. So, iting pinalita, papalit kay Bongo, essentially, si former Rep. Lagdameo. And presidential management staff, ang magiging head ay si Naida Ang Ping. Sino si Naida Ang Ping based sa mga nabasa ko? Siya ay galing sa Leyte and naging close aide ni Kokoy Romualdez. Si Cocoy Romualdez, ito yung tatay ni ni incoming uh, let's say uh, speaker of the house na si Martin Romualdez. So governor ng Leyte dati si Cocoy Romualdez 
and close aid itong si Ang Ping or si Ma'am Ang Ping. Tapos, sinasabi din ng mga medyo may alam dun sa BBM team na siya ay currently part of the BBM transition team, yung mga pumipili ng cabinet members, ganun. Tapos, sabi din nila na siya ay nag-handle ng BBM campaign uh, finances. So, parang siya yung nag-disburse daw, allegedly, ng mga campaign finances or she, she had a huge part in that. Tapos, ano pang nakita ko dito? Wala, wala akong masyadong makita kay Ang Ping, honestly, but I, I can kind of speculate that ito medyo loyalty uh, uh, assignment because of the close ties uh, from the Romualdez family and being part of the BBM transition team herself. So ito parang uh, you, you could say na marami siyang naitulong dun sa kampanya. So this is part of, of that uh, in exchange for that effort, right? Uh, balik lang ako mabilis kay Ivan Uy. Hindi ko nabanggit incoming uh, ICT secretary natin. I, I found a lot of interesting things about him. I, I also uh, noticed na apart from being a lawyer, so UP Law graduate to, and he also had, uh, he graduated from University of Minnesota as well, Western Educated. Nag-serve siya sa DOJ. So, naging ano siya, uh, ano tawag dito, legal researcher sa Department of Justice. Uh, nung Davide time, Hilario Davide time. And maraming nagkikredit sa kanya nung digital transformation ng Department of Justice, being an IT expert himself. Hindi lang siya lawyer, but IT expert as well. So, medyo perfect yung naging role niya dun sa digital transformation nung DOJ. So, that's why I'm looking forward kung anong magagawa niya sa iba pang agency natin na sobrang antiquated na, na kailangan talaga maging digitally, uh, magkaroon ng digital transformation, right? Tapos, uh, siya ay expert specifically on computer forensics, cybercrime, electronics, cyber ethics, so very IT heavy. Right? Okay, so iyon ang meron dun sa apat na new cabinet, cabinet member picks. Punta tayo really quickly to the good news and the bad news uh, of what I've seen for the past days. Good, let's start. Good news. Uh, DepEd Secretary Briones nag-encourage na siya ng 100% face-to-face classes in the coming academic year. Nag-encourage, mind you, hindi nag-force uh, kasi masama naman kung mag-force, sariling decision pa rin yan, especially ng private schools. So sabi niya, dapat mag-100% na in the coming academic year. I agree with that because as we know, sobrang iba yung learning experience kapag face-to-face -face and kapag uh, let's say online classes, right? People don't really learn a lot kapag online yung, uh, let's say, interaction. And a lot of the students, uh, hindi pa nag ng camera yan and yung mga nanay mismo yung nagsusumbong during PTA meetings na, ah, hindi naman nakikinig sa'yo yan, sir, eh. Naglalaro lang ng kung, kung ano yan, eh, habang nagli-lecture ka, di ba? So, alam natin yung realities na yan. So, we should really strive for, for students to go back to class para, uh, para ma- Medyo questionable na quality of education, how much more online learning pa, right? But with safeguards in place, syempre. Okay, another good news, wage hike in order in Mindanao, medyo na-approved na nung dole. Uh, 25 pesos additional per day na sila sa northern Mindanao. So that brings it to 405 pesos daily minimum na, na salary sa northern Mindanao, daily wage. In comparison sa Metro Manila, Metro Manila 533 pesos per day na. Nagkaroon sila ng 33 pesos increase. Pero, yeah, it's good. Any increase is good, right? Pero, you'd have to think pa din na, uh, why, bakit, bakit ang laki yung disparity between Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao workers, right? If we really want to decentralize yung... Concentration of power, concentration of labor, we need to aim for equity between Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao workers. Kasi itong napakalaki ng nungga, parang sobrang unfair, commonsensically, nun sa mga nagtatrabaho sa probinsya. So they'd rather go to the very cramped Metro Manila para makipagsapalaran niya, right? Okay, another one, dumating na sa Senate floor itong proposal na increase yung, uh, ano tawag dito, Compensation, pension, 
pension sa mga indigent senior citizen. Alam nyo ba right now sa mga indigent senior citizen natin, 500 pesos lang ang kanilang monthly pension. Anong magagawa mo sa 500 pesos? Lalo na kung senior ka, marami ka ng health issues. 500 pesos is not gonna last you very far. So, may proposal, uh, nagpo-push for 1,000 pesos, monthly pension for indigent senior citizens. It's, it's a welcome development na doble na, pero I hope somebody would still push to make it higher. Ito yung mga mahirap, hirap na hirap na sa buhay, Uh, hindi natin alam kung may katuwang pa sila sa buhay kung yung mga apo nila nakakatulong dahil indigent nga sila so most likely the entire family is indigent right? let's say mapasa yan 1,000 pesos, napakalihit niya dami nilang gamot right? it's a step in the right direction pero I hope hindi lang tumigil sa 1,000 pesos uh, those are the good news bad news bad news uh, nagtansya, nagbigay na ng estimate yung PIDEA PIDEA said na so far, as of Feb this year, meron ng napatay officially, officially coming from PIDEA, 6,235 victims ng yung parang tokhang o drug, the uh, war on drugs. So, I think official figures, ha? How much more yung unofficial figures na hindi, hindi nila ni notch up as a statistic, right? So, bad news yun because We, we know that they are only getting small fry or middle fry, meaning wala namang malaking drug lord na, let's say, Chinese Connection or kung ano mang big, very big drug lord na napakulom or napatay, right? Na nanlaban and napatay, right? So, itong mga namatay because of the drug war, most of them are small fry, small time, middle time. So, yung drug war... sila yung pinaka naapektuhan talaga right pero yung mga nagpo-push or nagpapasok yung mga big time talaga it's it's very questionable what has happened to them kasi kung merong mang malaking nahuli dapat meron ng sobrang bonggang press conference na naganap right pero mm-hmm. pero wala right okay next uh, in, in comparison pa lang mabilis lang 6000 na na victims ng drug war mga namatay in comparison sa martial law yung mga namatay according to Amnesty International during the martial law years yung mga napatay ay 3,257 ito yung mga napatay tapos alam natin may mga na torture 35,000 tapos yung mga na illegally incarcerated mga 70,000 according sa estimates ng Amnesty International pero if you're just gonna look at the killings mas mataas na yung drug on war. 6,200 versus uh, Marcos uh, martial law years, 3,200. So, okay. Uh, next ay kay Laila de Lima. Nakakulong pa rin si Senator Laila de Lima. And right now, another witness. Uh, may bago na namang parang pronouncement si Joel Capones. So, nung nagkaroon daw ng cross-examination, Si Joel Capones, prosecu- prosecution witness to. So, nung tinanong daw ng defense o ng mga lawyer ni Senator De Lima about dun sa 1.5 million na tinestify niya before, na nakita daw niya na binigay kay Senator De Lima, ang sagot ni Joel Capones ay anong pera? An- parang ano, ano daw yung pera na pinag-uusapan? So, wala siyang recollection nung tinestify niya before na merong nakita siyang inabot, nakita with his own two eyes, na 1.5 million kay uh, Senator De Lima. So parang pinapabulaanan niya na kung anong sinabi niya before, or at least parang he's, he's saying na I don't remember kung anong 1.5 million na yun. Ano yung, anong pera? <sighs> okay. Lastly, sa bad news, Uh, formally yung dalawang nakakulong na formally executives pinakulong sila ng Senate Blue Ribbon Committee for failure to provide yung financial documents or financial contract ng formally yung company uh, and the DBM or Department of Budget Management so hindi nila ma-provide doon or hindi nila gustong i-provide 
So pinakulong sila sa Pasay City Jail, dati sa Senate lang yata, nilipat sila. So nakakulong na sila since November until now. And they've been requesting to be in house arrest for humanitarian reasons. So the bad news is, since matatapos na yung current Senate, uh, wala na rin si Gualdon sa Senate, he didn't win, no one's gonna continue that fight. Uh, they will be set free by June 3. Sabi ni Senate President Soto, since wala nang Blue Ribbon Committee, next Senate na June 3, mapapalaya na sila. So I don't know kung may iba pang kaso that would chase them. The, the That over budget, as we know, formally, and yung mga PPE, na sobrang questionable na ang laki ng kontrata na nakuha nila, well, well in fact, yung capital nung formally 600,000 lang and million, billion yung nakuha nilang kontrata, right? So, they will be free by June 3. I hope meron pang follow-up cases but malaya na sila. And I think that's all I have today. So, in summary, yung lima nating bagong secretary, may mga nakita naman tayong heavy din in credentials and merong previous experience. So we we look forward to what you're going to do. We 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 support them being Filipinos uh, and we hope that they do good in their in their incoming roles. And then yung usual good and bad news natin. And promote ko lang I uploaded yung recent YouTube video natin yung Rosas yung last performance ng Rosas ni Gapangalinan and ni uh, Nika De Rosario. Nasa YouTube na yon, so if you wanna watch that, please do, please share as well itong mga video natin. Lahat ng eventual monetary, let's say, na makakuha natin ay donate natin sa Angat Buhay NGO eventually. Salamat sa panonood. Happy Monday. Bye!